Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. seconds remaining five seconds remaining Jump. For potentially yeah. millions of dollars, it's not a big deal. You know, everyone always says it's not about the money, Owen. Oh, it is, Will. That's the only reason I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't, I'd cast some other inexplicable. What do you want? You want to do like Clash Royale or some oh, something? Oh goodness, no, no, save me now. Dota or bust, Will. Dota or bust. Dota or bust. So it's not about the money. No, I didn't know. It's I'm about the dotes. Gaben, he's given me 10% of this year's battle pass earnings. S that's it? Yeah, that's Dude, it. Dude, you have a bad agent. I know. <laughs> as soon as I got Bulldog kicked out, I asked for 40 asked for even. Share. Yeah. yeah. Step it up. There we go. Oh. Oh, there we are. That's so, a spin. Yeah, this hero, I have decided, is actually amazing. So has apparently Digital Chaos. So, so a lot of teams, to be fair. I've seen so much fun. I think I've, I think I've seen four Spain games today that I've casted. It's it's all there. I mean, it's it's like an anti-mage, but better. It's like a Luna, but not irrelevant. It's <laughs> it's like Luna, but not. Yeah. It's it's got a built-in better than a Battle Fury. I mean, sure you don't get the damage, but it's better cleave, isn't it? More cleave damage. I will say that uh, I think that DC values this hero a lot higher than most people do. Okay. It does have a very good win rate so far, and it is the hero that they beat OG with. So oh, obviously, really? they had that in that game, today. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. So if you beat OG, you're thinking to yourself, wow, this hero, there might be something to it. Warcry is an incredible ability, more than anything. And it, it shuts down a lot of heroes. Like, for example, Dro strats. Like, imagine playing Dro against a Sven. Yeah, you don't. You don't. I mean, you can. You hit him like a hundred times, it does no damage. Yeah, it's it's not going to be an easy walk in the park. I mean, do, what, do, are you that confident then, if you're DC and you're grabbing this fan, that you don't even bother banning the drow? Or are you still sort of tempted to take it out? No, because you can still take Batrider, and they haven't yeah. banned Bat. And but Bat you've you banned Bat yourself now. That was the kind of confusing thing for me. Okay. You didn't think they'd do that? You mm -hmm. think they'd leave it in? I thought that they'd leave it in, because if you leave the Batrider, and then you take away the possibility to go for the drow... And if LGD, FY ban the bat, then it lends a little bit more credence to the idea that they could go for it. Well. What there is a hero, by the way, that hasn't been picked. Well, at all, you mean? Yeah, and DC, they could do it. Which one? The Warlock? The Meeps. Or oh, the Meep? I got banned there. That's true. They first, take it out. The first I two. Yeah, that's a bit of respect for my other fight. Because I was actually looking as well, because I casted some DC earlier, and... Execration banned out the Meepo, and I was like, "Fog, is this something that everyone is doing because it's our bed?" And not that many teams are actually banning out Meepo. They're not. That's why I'm. Yeah. So, so most of the time, they do have the chance. To yeah. Grab most it. of the time, that yeah. normally when you look at bans, that's yeah. that's confusing. No one uses. They had. It's like they had the opportunity. I saw their previous games. It would have been a yeah. decent Meepo game, but they're still not taking it. So it's surprising that they decided to ban it. But Bob was really confident in Abed Meepo. He said, "Is he? He does believe." Yeah, even uh, even when we were around, and Planet Nog was okay, <laughs> they were like, "Now we have the best Meepo player in the world." Yeah, I mean, Abed is pretty crazy. Beastmaster, one that I've personally not seen a lot in the games that I've casted. I know it has been picked already, of course, in this group stage a few times, and it just got picked in our last game. Oh, did you? Did it win? No, it lost horribly. How? Oh. Like it was super one-sided. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm not surprised it's coming back, especially with um, teams starting to believe in the Necro yeah. book again. You know, the, the fact that you have this hero that's very good at farming it, good at utilizing it, and great against the Sven, having that hard lockdown through the BKB, putting him at at a halt when he pops the God Strength, make yeah. sure that he wastes Plus that. Plus the boars. Yeah, all the boars. You want to kite. Yeah. So, uh, DC, they pick their dual lane mid, because let's be real, they're going to dual lane for op in mid. This is just Bulba's life now. Is uh, He's like the... The servant to an, a 16 year old. And I will say, by the way, there's something interesting about LFY strategy. Because oftentimes they'll take their mid in the first four, but they know that DC prioritizes Abed so heavily that this is one of the few times that I've seen LFY hold on to it in terms of draft. And what do you think that is just out of respect for Abed? Yes, definitely. Because yeah. you know, everyone knows. Oh, and everyone. Even people's parents watching that Bulba is going to camp mid with that Zen King. Yeah, I've never been more certain of anything in my life. And if I'm wrong, then I'm, you know, then everything I know about this team is just horribly off. Well, there's the there's the unique player. So I mean, DC have got their hands on this a few times over there, filling the games that they've been playing, and uh, definitely a strong one to grab. I mean, you're looking at the lineup of LGDFY. They have three melee. They do have. They do have relatively good ways of stopping the black hole. I mean, with the familiars getting them in position behind him. You've got the roar as well with pretty good range. So not necessarily the, the easiest black hole, but obviously you don't, you're not picking Enigma just for the black hole. There's so much more that this hero can do. It's not just that, but it kind of mainly is for DC. Because you think that's what, the only reason why they're picking it? The big thing is that that's they the already have a silencer. Oh. And I know, I know that DC especially, and oh, NA yeah, teams true. in general... They really like having a guaranteed win condition. I know I overstay that term, but in this case, it's really true. Because Enigma is one of those heroes where if X, Y, and Z go wrong, you always have Enigma as your fallback. Okay. Because you'll, you'll get a black hole off. It enables a lot more plays, too. But for Eva, Enigma, I've seen some, some whiffed black holes, but Bulba, he's doing the right thing. He's not giving up on the hero, and... There's no real way for them to cancel the black hole once he gets, like, BKB Lincolns. Sure, yeah. Yeah, at that point, absolutely. It, well, at least considering the four heroes we've got so far from LFY, they yeah. do still have that final pick. They ban DP, by the way. That's a smart move. By, um, I think they should ban the Medusa as well. Yeah, the that's DC. true. That would that would be... Uh, that's exactly yeah, what they do. look at that. Yeah, I, the, you couldn't have said that any better, Will. That, that so they take the Queen of Pain. Sense. So now it's a Sand King, Queen of Pain mid. Yeah. So you need a hero that does reasonably okay, and that hero would be DP or Medusa, but both have been banned out. So maybe you take something like Razor. Yeah, Razor would, yeah. I like that. I like these suggestions, Will. Yeah. As a Sven, yeah, do it. It's going to be great for the fight. Razor, Viper. Those are the two that I would go with. But then you don't have a Black Hole Canceler, but you're probably still fine. But then who is left that could cancel the Black Hole? Uh, There's a, a strong independent mid. There's not a whole lot of options, honestly. It, it gets awkward, especially if that's like your only intention in the game. They played Sniper the other day too, but I thought they were going to take Razor or Viper if there's any two heroes that they were going to grab. We we measured it out though. Like um, I was talking to somebody, we were we were thinking of all the picks that LFI do, that um that make them what they are, and we noticed that Dusa and DP over and over again. With their two heroes, but so I will say Razor or Viper. Razor was my first inclination, but they've got time to decide. They need a tower hitter more than anything, so no matter what, they need a range hero that ends the game before this Enigma can just delay. Yeah, I mean, I guess they've got decent push anyway with the Beastmaster in their lineup. You know that that turns everyone into a bit of a sieger. Yeah, with that that very tasty passive. But all right, some select some extra range capability. Don't random an alchemist, boys. No way. They'll pick it up. Ooh. It's going to be the DK. and That is... He's going to suffer in the mid, isn't he? He's really going to suffer yeah. in the mid. That is... Oh. Quite the decision. I mean, it certainly gives you that push that you were saying that you were hoping... Them yeah, to they, do need, they do need something to hit towers, but... They've got it there. But... I guess it's one thing or another. Because if they take the Razor... Ra to be fair, Razor doesn't do the best at hitting towers. That's why he has that Ags upgrade that Icestar yeah. gave him. But at the same time, he has a much better laning phase than than this enables, anyways. Yeah, this could get a bit rough. I mean, obviously, looking at LFY's lineup, 
do you expect them to to sit like DDC mid to to try and counteract the? You're going to have to because I think in a pure one v one matchup, Queen of Pain versus DK. DK does okay-ish. That was actually the first matchup I played in while I, when I was in Korea for Zephyr. It well, was you, were against, you were playing the Quapple? I was playing the DK against the DK. Uh, Jimmy Demon Ho. Ah, and how, uh, how did it go in a straight 1v1? <sighs> it was fine. It was fine. But you, you never were a kind of threat of I being was like, killed. Because you're not really too worried. He's one of the better melee heroes that's surviving the lane. Because you get a poor man shield and you have the armor, so it's okay. And that was before the, the change to his Breathe Fire. If you remember now, it does the negative, or the minus damage. Yeah, it minus takes damage. damage down, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Alright, let's do it up, Owen. I'm, let's give these I'm people... I'm for these two. I mean, as I said, LFY, they're so far unstoppable. But I really feel if there was ever a team to slip them up. You know, considering, you know... <laughs> if there's ever a team... <laughs> not OG, but it's gonna not, be... Not OG. It's no, our boy bolts. These big... Di digital chaos. <laughs> digital chaos. They are the LFY kryptonite. They're gonna be... You know, I will say, in terms of draft, I think this is, this is the game. If there's gonna be a game, it's this game. I see Look at do. this, this respect, Abed God. They are respecting the Abed. They know. I mean, he is pretty amazing. There's no doubt about that. And on the Queen of Pain, definitely a, a hero. You know, you, you get kind of these heroes that high-level players play, and it's it, it feels like the just the potential of the hero kind of caps out. You know, they, they can't show their full flair on it. But something like a Queen of Pain, there's just so much you can do with that if you're above and beyond the level of other players in the game. And, and Abed... Mr. 10K. Any Dooboos here? Just one Dooboo. I'll tell you what, Dooboo, yeah, Dooboo, that was right. That's what Dooboo earlier played Silence, I believe, in both games against Execration, and his global silences, I've got to say, it's been some of the best that I've seen here. He is absolutely brilliant. Did they pick Bat with it, by the way? By any chance? I can't remember. Mm. I think they may have. I don't know. It, but definitely we had, yeah, we had a couple of global silence games, and... As I say, both were pretty one-sided. DC looking hot, but here we have to start with. Mason taking a bit of a beating. He'll stun the boar along with the master. Hold them back. And uh, we'll still be able to grab the bounty ring despite LFY's efforts there to contest it. So I thought that do that Bulba would start uh, in this mid lane. I was so certain about it, but it looks like he's veering towards this bottom lane. Feels like he can make something happen here. It is just a Visage and Inersa. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, as you said as well, in a in a one v one, I mean, Abed doesn't need any help. I mean, sure, the presence would be nice if you want to totally crush the DK, but it's it's a lane where both are going to farm. Perhaps Bob just does feel that it's more of a threat letting this Ursa getting a free lane. And with DDC here, of course, as well, it, it wouldn't be too nice for for Rev, for Rev on his solo once the the Visage gets a couple of levels. It's going to be quiet. Quite nasty to lane against. I like this, by the way. They always send the off laner, and look what he does. Afu just gonna pull the side lane out. This is how they often gain advantage, and they create some space for in flame. Let's see how Mason and Doobie react to this. I'm gonna come in and try and get a bit of harassment down as at Afu, but a quick stun holds the two of them back. Yeah, there's a stack here for the spend eventually. Yeah, and that's definitely something that yeah, DC have. All the potential of clearing in comparison to LFY, who don't really have any way of bringing down any sort of stacks or utilize any stacking in the jungle. I guess it obviously wants the sixes there on super, but not necessarily what you want to be using that Elder Dragon form for. They're going to be wanting to look for structures. Bottom lane, Bulba, being gone on a little bit. The Malefis is there onto Monet though. Holds him back, keeps Bulba safe. At the moment, I mean, would you do you think anyone's particularly happier than the uh, the other side with the laning situation? I would say LFI for sure. Yeah, just I mean, because this top lane is going so well. And I was going to say this is looking to be on the verge of first blood. I mean, Mason's manning up onto Arthur and hit oh. back to claim it just before LFI get it. So Mason, I mean, that one v one trade. I think you take it if you DC, don't you? Getting the first blood, getting Mason involved like that. But it's a minus two. True, that is true. Never forget the minus two. Minus two. Plus two on Dubu. He's a smart man. Got a lot of intel at least today. One Dubu gets plus two. CS though in this top lane. Seven for one. Certainly being slowed down a bit, but I guess that is expected with a Beastmaster and his ball. Well, in fact, in flame. It's just not going to commit there. 
Mason, oh, he did have a Mango, but not wanting to go in with the Storm Hammer. Probably not confident in having quite enough damage to finish off in Flame. Mid lane. Pressure Super being is there. going insane. Yeah, this CS is just off the charts, doubling that of our bed. I mean, as you said, you, you expected, if anything, the, the Quap to have maybe a slightly easier time, or as you said, pretty even, but to I have this sort of a lead. Even. Yeah. And the biggest thing is that I thought that Bulbo was going to be there doing some kind of dual lane shenanigans is uh, Abed is now out of mana. Yeah. Even going to get stunned he up. He's in trouble. Dragon Tail. The right clicks were super. I mean, they do lose the Nyx Assassin. Fairy oh. Fire will keep Abed alive. Did they get both kills oh, through this? Bulba. He even His salves presence. up. Yeah, they're going to get it. He's trying to bottle the up. The Assassin himself. He's absolutely... I mean, as you said, you know, you wanted to see Bulba mid. Bulba said, I'll come mid blitz when it's needed. <laughs> when, it, Bam, when it's time. Bad. When it's time. And getting involved in both of that, keeping our bed alive. I mean, it, that rotation couldn't have been any better. If you dive him, he will come. Yeah, they did get pretty greedy with that dive. There's no doubt about that. Pretty greedy. Very. They were, they were diving a tier 2 tower. <laughs> with Bulba within range, and you don't do that. Do they not know who they're playing against? I don't know. Maybe the name tags aren't working. Do they not know that that is Bulba? Test. Because I feel like if they did know, they would know that he was going to show up at some point. I mean, Bulba's everywhere. You can't blame him. Bottom lane. How's the CS looking for Monet? Yeah, he's absolutely on par with Mason, so both safe laners in the same place. Obviously, both heroes with very different ways of playing. In fact, mid lane again. Our oh. bad. This time, can he escape the neutral deny? What? Afu gives up. He says, okay, the neutrals win. He doesn't even go in and try and take it. That should have been a kill. And on top of that, it was the raindrops that allowed him to survive through that. Yeah, that, that looked a bit awkward. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe LF1 want to give DC a bit of a head start, give him a chance. Yeah, Let just an go. awkward situation overall. Not really certain what was supposed to go down there. Probably just lag. We'll, we'll, we'll let it down to lag. Yeah, cover it up for Mr. Afu. Top lane, he's come back up. How's Inflame doing? Inflame's getting a lot out of this lane on the off lane, much more uh, than of Forev, which I guess is no surprise at all, being on this Beastmaster. He's nearly got level 6, so certainly has the potential of setting up something on this top lane for LFY. Probably going to wait, though. I don't know if you immediately hit 6 and you make some kind of rotation. Like, it's not as necessary to do something at this kind of speed. Like, you're more welcome to just chill, as a Beastmaster, don't really have to force things. You steal this mini stack. That's a good first step oh, with the Nyx mid lane. Guess who's here? Bulba with his buddy, Dubu, ready to go on to Super. And that should be a plus two, and indeed it is. The Sonic Wave flies through Clips DDC as well. Digital Chaos. Opening up with some tip-top rotations. And LFY, I mean, they knew it. In the beginning of the game, they say... Abed God, they're commenting, they know that this kind of treatment is going to happen, that's what we call it, the treatment. He's getting the treatment. Just going to get dual lane, tri lane in this mid lane. But they still don't seem to be respecting it very much, and uh, Super's going to pop the dragon form. And the reason for this, of course, is wants to try to push out this lane, make things difficult, but he wasn't able to protect his meat wagon. So it's not going to even lead to a push or anything, it's just going to be a trade for CS more than anything. Yeah, and, and, and in terms of CS, he does still maintain quite the lead against Starbird. We saw him get this earlier, and it's not turned around. It's huge. But in terms of net worth, just barely a difference. Honestly, they're both pretty poor. Again, Bulba coming back in. The Shadow Strike from Arbed, slowing super down, but Bulba not going to go too crazy. Just using his presence, his aura, in the lane to keep Super on his toes. And it's actually now coming through the jungle. We'll see if he can make it down towards the bottom. Potentially Monet is level 6, so it is a hard gank to make. Has that level 6 and Enrage ready to go. Forev himself, not quite hitting the 6 yet on Enigma. LFY moving both their supports, DDC and Arfu, up towards the top lane. I think they're aware of these movements from Digital Chaos. Oh, and that, bottom. Oh, is he going to do it? He senses it. They're going to send the Eidolon in, and Monet is actually going to run into him. He has that ultimate up, though. On the Ursa. Can't really go too hard oh, in it. Bulba gets punished. The end of Bulba's reign. No messing around from him. Flame knows that's the high value kill this game. And he'll take it. That was a strong reign though. He did get a lot accomplished on the map. He's barely behind his Queen of Pain in net worth, which probably says more about the Queen of Pain than it does about the Sand King. Yeah, I mean, are you a little surprised that oh, Arbet's... Oh, he's out of mana, but Afu? 
Well, he doesn't doesn't quite want to go in there with the stun. Maybe felt that Super couldn't have got there in time to to hit the follow-up Dragon Tail. So Arbed, his life will be spared. Still, this Nyx Assassin. They're reversing things a little bit. Really uh, making sure that this DK wins, and this DK is definitely winning. Yes, the farm is looking fantastic for Super. No doubt about that. Going for those treads. Mason, how's he looking? Level 6, nearly 7. Standard stuff from him as well. Treads into the Mask of Madness. We'll see if he opts for uh, either the Blink or the Echo Saber this game. Yeah. That's his next one. Nyx Assassin is invised up. He's going to spot this Queen of Pain who's actually going to go the long way around. Doesn't really want to mess with anything. Bulba, though, going to show himself mid. Looks like they want to go for some kind of play, but... Abed, of course, still has the raindrops available to him and has more than enough mana to escape if anything happens. Is they're going to rotate even more heroes in. Yeah. Here comes Dubu. They don't expect the invis Nyx. That's the thing. So DC do have to be careful how they commit on this. As you can see, Super wanting to go forward. They really want to defend this mid tower. This mid tower is going to be the key uh, for DC, especially if they can stop a Dragon Knight from taking oh, it. Oh, in fact, wait. No, they got vision on him. The sentry down. They play the bait perfectly. DC jump forward. They take one. Super holds back. Arbed with the Dragon Tail. They won't quite get the DK. Maybe they can get something else. Burrow Strike onto Wind Flame. He's rotated in. He does have the roar. He'd love to use it on Bulba. Shouts in his Luggles again. And now with the wraparound from Super on the high ground, they'll take Bulba down. Still, very good uh, bait on that sentry ward. DC absolutely knew what was going on the entire time. They're going to save their mid tower too. Quite big for them. And on top of that, Mason is going to continue to farm out this top area. Push it in, get some free farm, and it's making him pay already. He's yeah. already at the top of the net worth chart. This Ursa, on the other hand, a lot of creeps denied his way. This Enigma doing a very good job so far. Forev, he is really farmed. Almost has that Midas ready with the Arcane Boots. Typically, we see Enigmas get hurt a little bit more than this. He's already taking this bottom tower. Going to rotate up as well. What's the build beam from Forever's Enigma? Does he get with the Midas, then the Blink BKB? Midas, Blink, BKB. Yeah. Okay. Probably go for a Lincoln's at some point. Maybe Shadow Blade. Yeah, I mean, I guess it just yeah depends how he wants to, to play it in terms of waiting for the Roar or coming in with the counter play. Oh, top lane. Flame, backed up by Arfu, as we're seeing, fairly tanky indeed on this uh, Beastmaster with the medallion, the headdress, the poor man's, and that infused raindrop. Can certainly bully around the members of Digital Chaos. Has the roar back up in a couple of seconds. They're eyeing up Mason. Uh, They're gonna I'm go gonna... for it. He's war cried though. There's yeah, I mean he's popped the roar, but that that was that was no, there was nothing after that. It looked like it healed him when then it dealt damage. He just war cried, walked away. Just, just saying his dominance, you know, so you see, getting the space in the lane, I guess. No, that's very good. If you force the war cry out like that, or <laughs> if you force the war out force like the that. Force the war cry. <laughs> if you force the war cry. It's worth it. For okay. that 22 second cooldown. Look, they're bringing in Monet. He's like, war cry's, war cry's damp. Let's go, no, boys. back up. <laughs> there we go. See they should they be able to kill Dubu, though. Yeah, the familiars are on him. Afu has the stun if he needs it. Doesn't look like he does. Monet comes in for the kill secure. Look at this bottom tower, though. This That's is a lot well of split push. Forev getting a fair bit of damage onto this tier 2. And meanwhile mid at the same time. And Mason's shoving the lane in, using the God Strength and the Mask of Manus. Super will chase Bulba off this bottom lane, but Forev, he's going to stick there, continue pushing. So LFY, they, they get a silencer, they get a tower, but at the same time they lose their mid tier 1. And indeed, as you say, they nearly lose that bottom tier 2 as well. Very low on the health. Remember, there is a Dragon Knight on the other team who typically likes to push out this mid lane as fast as he can so that he can continue to pressure the side lanes. But in fact, it's the reverse that's happening. Very good play by DC. Playing very proactive instead of reactive. Losing Dubu in exchange for taking all that damage on that full HP tier 2 tower bottom and taking that mid tower. That mid tower is going to be what allows them to protect that Roshan a lot easier too. Yeah. It makes it harder for LFY to defend against the smoke ganks. Typically what ends up happening, Owen, is when you take that entire bottom side and you take this mid tower, you've got the entire jungle open and all of a sudden Radiant loses half of the map in the game. I, I love I love this as well from Mason. Going for that Blink Dagger. I really feel this This is just the optimal build. Mask of Manus into Blink is so, so for beautiful for your farm. Uh, in, instead of going for like the Echo Saber. Oh, oh yeah, indeed the S and Y after the, the Mask of Manus. Blink is just so good. You know, you get the Blink. He's literally an anti-mage, but better now.
Yeah, he doesn't need no battle fury, he's got the passive skill. Oh. He is being focused though, they're coming in with a gank. There's the Warcry global as well. Perfectly done. I told you, you got to watch this Dubu with his globals. He knows how to do him. They want to find something too. They're coming back in. Bulba, can he close the gap? Forever. All it takes is a Malefist and they'll be able to get themselves in there. Great micro there from Inflame. With the ball slow, but Forever says, your boar is now mine. Now the turnaround there with a the roar, they'll take down one. That's the Enigma out. You don't want to go for this Dragon Knight either. He's quite tanky. 1500 HP and 9 stick charges. They really wanted to get something after they that, did. after they committed that global, but still way too much of an overextension. Super's gonna run into the silencer, just back out, and all they want to do is secure this Roshan. Of course, they don't have this mere tier 1 tower, so there's nothing really for this Nyx yeah. to go to. DC can't stop this, by the looks of it. It's falling far too quick with Mone getting his hands on it. Arbet's, oh, Arbet's in the neighborhood, does have it. an invis room, but it's too late. Mone grabs it, and in fact, now they're looking to fight Dragon Tail onto Mason. They're gonna chase forward on the back of it all. Arbeb will throw out the Sonic Wave. Deals no damage. It really didn't. So LFY, get Roshan, get out of there, lose It kills the nothing. courier though. Okay. So yeah, it's not that they lost nothing, they lost the courier. Yeah, they lost the courier. They lost their furry little friend. Chicken friend dies. Rest in peace. Gone but never forgotten. But still, this is, you know, this is LFY starting to hit their stride, doing what they need to do. Getting the Aegis, utilizing Mono's Ursa. He's got the phase, has the flattens, halfway towards the Blink Dagger. Big farm for Mason though. You really want to take this mid tower though, if you're LFI. You wanted to be the first person to strike anyways. The crazy part though is just how tanky their team is. Because of how much farm this Beastmaster was able to get out of that top wave. Yeah, he's, he's, get, he's, he's got, got medallion. Look how much money he's got! He's got 2700 <laughs> gold, I didn't even realize he was that farmed. Oh, I knew he was farmed, goodness, but... Yeah. That's taking it to another oh. level. I mean, I nearly teetoed that, and probably for Forever's sake, he would have preferred that I did. <laughs> I think that was the shortest black hole I've seen in a while. Instantly cancel cast it, and he is going to pay for his sins as LFY clean him up. I, I'm not quite sure what happened down there. But uh, it was not the way that Digital Chaos wanted to play that, as now they're in threat of losing another tower. I mean, LFY, they're grouping up, they're getting ready to go, and maybe the pressure's a little too much for DC. I mean, Mason does pick up the bit link. If they can keep the game going, this Fang can get to some amazing place. Yep. But with the pressure that LFY are putting on with this full Solar Crest now picked up on Inflame, this it's is, getting pretty scary. This is incredibly fast. And if you look at DC's lineup, this Sven does not like going against the Solar Crest, especially at this speed. The 20% evasion and 10 armor. What is this Fen supposed to do when he blinks in, even when he gets in there? They have a lot of different control for him. He can't burst down any of the cores. The Ursa, of course, can just pop the ultimate. They've got the Beastmaster Roar to control him up. If you look at LFY's team, they're just so hard to kill. You've got Gravekeeper's Cloak on the Visage. You can always pop the Spiked Carapace on this uh, on this Nyx Assassin. Dragon Knight, of course, naturally tanky. Ursa has his uh, has his ultimate, and this Beastmaster's got uh, the Solar Crest. So, of course, Abed, when he goes in, ults wasn't even to try to harm them. He's like, this isn't going to do anything. He does get the Courier, but in terms of raw damage, DC just need a lot of farm before they take any sort of engagement. They need at least... At least the BKB on Mason. But uh, even then, as we said, there's a lot of ways still to deal with this fan. From the lineup of LFY, bottom lane, Forever in trouble, straight up with the run. Look at those familiars oh. go to work. Now Mason, can he do anything in return? This is a solar crested beastmaster, He's looking remember? for it, it's such a tanky man. I mean, surely they get it with the curse ticking down, and indeed, with Arbet jumping forward, they will kill him, but you saw how much it took. And Bulba, he's gonna get run into. This Ursa does have Blink Dagger and the Aegis, but the rest of the team isn't quite here yet, and Afu, they know he's up there, he's spotted by the ward, he's gonna try to get out of here five seconds until his ulti. Yeah, it should be fine, unless they're prepared with detection. Oh, they actually Bulba wanna go for it. it. They just turn and take him. Despite the fact that they knew that he was there, still leads to a kill in favor of LFY, and LFY, this is exactly why they're the top seed in this group, they play yeah, so playing. fast. They really are, they have stepped up the, the speed. Meanwhile, look at top. While this happens, it's also simultaneous. And they kill this. They have got the vision on him. Beautifully done with the stun. They'll take him. Nice read from DC. They spot the Nyx Assassin coming down from the north. Bob set up in the lane up. and get it. He's saying to them, guys, we can't just give up this tower. It's a tier 2 tower that completely won the uncontested. Yeah, like, yeah they're not going to have a decision in this. It's already gone. LFY. There's no rebuttal plays. the problem for DC. Because they already pushed that bottom tier 2 tower, that's essentially an empty tower for free. Yes, they kill Afu, but he distracts them long enough. Yeah, Mason really needs to continue to find his family. He is still top of the net worth board, but 
It's just the fact it really feels like this is a game, even though, you know, 4 one 2 is not bad, it's just the, the, the pace of this game in terms of kills compared to the pace that LFY can force in terms of taking objectives, it's just not... Not oh, going Bulba. quite as easy one, and Bulba, There's indeed, one bird. It's maybe all that they need, one connection. Down goes the sentry, they'll chase Bulba down. Can he escape? Not with a soul assumption coming in like that. And Bulba is gone. That almost cost them more than it. <laughs> They've dropped a ward for that too. Not the opportune position, but and it's it's at least it's not totally. Oh, useless. I'm gonna get spotted here too. There's a shadow blade though on super. He has no idea. Afu still got the stun. Yeah, this sort of lockdown chain stuns from LFY. Nothing that Arbe can do in reaction. And they need to stop going in their jungle, Owen. That they is do. the death trap. It, it really is, as you can see from from the serious wards and the the panic wards. There's full control from LFY. They do lose the Aegis. They're about to clean up another tier two. We're just 18 minutes in, and LFY has not had the the chance to see them in, in some of these performances. But they are showing me why these guys are in the spot that they are. Not dropping a game so far. It's it's just pretty perfect. I mean, it, it, the laning stage, sure, that DC got something out of it as well. But as soon as it comes out of that, LFY are just making the superior movements, and then they're, they're never messing around. You know, it's always clear what the next objective is. Exactly. And something I want to point out on top of that is, you notice how they use the Aegis. They immediately use it to take objectives. On top of that, they don't just 5-man immediately, they split up. They show this Ursa with Aegis mid, so they're thinking to themselves, okay, we can't fight it. The rest of his team is likely behind it. While that's happening, the DK and the Nyx are setting up on the opposite side, killing Abed. By the time they realize that's happening, this Ursa's already taken this mid tower to half. We noticed that bottom when Afu was dying, again, the DK was accomplishing something on the map. There's always something happening for their team. Nobody's just farming quite aimlessly. And with all but one tier one tower or tier two tower down in the game, they've got so much map control. They're just going to wait for the next Aegis. They can make the same play and then go high ground. TC themselves really feels like they need to get these key items. Bulba is closing in on the Blink Dagger. Hasn't quite got it. Getting the Sand King Blink, getting the Mason BKB. That could be when things start to turn. Abed nearly has the Yule Scepter. Which is, it's going to help him a little bit, but at the same time, we've seen, you know, if they can get the jump on him with the Vendetta, they've got so much control between the chain stuns. Oh, that courier almost died. Uh, something I want to point out, by the way, if you look at the map, everyone on LFI for the most part, they're near enough, but they are split up in farming. And if you take a look at DC, they're so afraid right now. They are four manning down here. Forever even making his way down here. So they're all just sharing this one area of creeps. Nobody's even farming neutrals anymore because they're almost certain that Afu might be there. And this is the power of Nyx Assassin. This is why he's got something like an 80% win rate. Been picked over 20 times. Shout out to Nahaz. Here we have it. They are going to try and utilize this, this, the fact that they're kind of forced to group together. They'll, they'll go for a smoke play. If but you've got a five man, you might as well make something happen out yeah. of it. But they're so late to this. Look at this. LFY already sense something's coming. They're going to group up themselves, take the high ground on top of the shrine. Defusal's done on Monite. That war cry ain't going to do anything Who's anymore. Gonna run into they, first? Are they going to commit? Bulba indeed sees the chance. They're going to jump forward with Forev. Holding onto the black on now. He pops. Oh, he whips. doesn't catch anybody in it. Sonic Wave flies out. Only gets onto our food. DC and now the turnaround out. comes. Dubu's down. Bulba as well in a lot of trouble. He's gone. Mason on the retreat. But look, Super trying to chase it down. The blink out just in time. Mason, can they catch him? I think he should be safe. Oh, that is... War Cry and Blink up again in a couple of seconds because Super closed this gap. It's going to be close. Ah, he's fine, Mason. We'll get out, but yeah, that's... There's no black hole? You said it yourself, Will. You've, you've not been too impressed by some of Ferrer's black holes, and he's yet to hit a big one oh, this game. Oh, they're going to chase him down. Straight One's in. One's done. Here's the second. Oh, can they punish this, DC? I don't know if they can. Arbe getting caught out, brought down. Double kill for Monet. LFY, dude. These guys are good at Dota, too. They are so good at Dota 2, and they play completely objective-based style. Yeah. If you look at the score, it's 14 to 8, despite the fact that they just picked up three kills right there. So it was much closer than that half a second ago, but despite that, that's a 10k lead. There's a difference of six kills, 10k lead. It's all going to come down to that tower and objective gold. They've done such a good job of splitting the map at the same time. 
during this time, everyone, it feels like they're doing everything at once. They're farming neutrals, they're farming the lanes, they're near each other at all times, they're ready for the five man. LFI, they were completely prepared for that smoke. And look at the timing of Afu at the same time. You notice when he got stunned on from Fog, he still manages to get his spike to Kerfus off. Something that we didn't quite point out. But that's what made it difficult for DC because Forever was in there. He he saw the spike Kerfus, he's like, I can't hold this. Yeah. It's so hard for him to actually get the black hole, so. Even though we are calling out them, them being whiffed, it's, you know, you, you've got to give respect to the fact that LFY just with their draft and player making it so hard for the oh, they to get it done. Oh, they saw the split. They saw the smoke with the hawk in the corner up here. They know they're going around. Afu, he's going to spot this. Instantly There's the jump it. in and that's going to be one down. Bulb has gone. They'll look for more. Turn towards Mason. The Fury Swipe stack up. That's the Sven out of this. Bulba, he's actually going to buy back. So this Blink Dagger timing is going to really be put on hold. And he can't do anything with it either. It's going to be a buyback and retreat as DC just have to get themselves back to base. Oh, look at Super's moving in. He wants to go for more. Dragon Tail onto Forever. There's the familiar still locked out. Bulba can't hold them back. Gets the three man burrow strike into the global. But where's the follow up? There's still no black hole. It's down for 40 seconds. The sonic wave comes through, but it's nowhere near enough damage at this point. I mean, they will send LFY back for now. And don't lose anything more than Mason, but it really is DC struggling with the power of LFY at this stage of the game. And look at how LFY has decided to itemize. Super, this drums in a Shadow Blade build for his damage and survivability. On top of that, his next item, immediately the Heaven's Halberd. Yeah. We talked about how good Evasion was going to be against DC's lineup. The Halberd is probably the best item that you can build against this fan. Even if he gets the BKB off, if you catch him with the Halberd first, you're going to waste half of his BKB duration to begin with. And DC, they probably have one more attempt at this. We we'll, we call the second Aegis the high ground Aegis. Oh. It's probably going to be their best opportunity to defend. But LFY, they're on the hunt. If they kill four of. That would allow them to do it. He really needs that BKB. Oh, desperately so. Oh, look There's this, so though. many different ways they can cancel this hole. And the yeah, inflame now has an axe, so that raw going to be ever more, ever frequently a threat. Was the cooldown 45 seconds? Look at the cast range. It's almost the entire screen. It's very hard to mess that up. And uh, you can guarantee this man, especially when he sees the BKB comes out, he is just going to be saving that for that Enigma. Even the BKB isn't quite enough. Yeah. Although the Global Silence, they need to do sure. hit things That's, in conjunction. Yeah, the Global Silence, yeah, there's still not the answer. Oh, super, they're not going to find anyone. Brief or P for Team DC. I'm going to head forward with our bed. Arfu and Mone, you know, they'll go in on this, Arfu, but it is all spotted out. They it's 3 on 5, division. and DC are still afraid to take this engagement. Oh, now they jump in though, but Mone immediately on the sidelines, getting Mason down to third health. Mason's got up, it jumps forward, but Bulbas hold back by the stun. Mone just turns to him as well, picks up the double kill. They just can't fight here, DC. It's a 4v, a 3v5, and they still can't do anything about it. DC still have to watch their one position go down. They get a little bit too over-aggressive thinking that there's no way that LFY is going to hang around the area, but LFY with this opening, going to go for the high ground. Oh, Look at the jump! Woo! Dude, boo! Is down. Mane just jumps in and takes him. Goes back towards the tier 3. This is going to be LFY cleaning up at least the mid lane racks. Zero respect gaming. They're just diving tier 3s. They don't care anymore. How do you beat these guys? I thought Bulba would have the answer. Maybe he does, because, well, you know what's more impressive than mm. beating a team that's on a 12-game win streak? At TI, in one of the hardest groups that we've seen in quite some time. What's it's, up? It's beating a team that's on a 13-game win streak. <laughs> Bulba is <laughs> padding the stats. Oh, he he's going to go in. He's, oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. he's got a couple. They have brought down the Nyx Assassin, but Monet's on the sidelines. He's taking oh, that one. Cheese. There's the roar coming through. Super heals himself back up to full health, and G, G is cool. All part of Bulba's plan, though. <laughs> Game two, that's when it's going to happen. You're unbelievable, Owen. Oh, something else. Oh, oh 23 to 9. 23 <laughs> goal lead. 26 minutes in. Not a chance for DC here in this game one. Not a chance at all. I, I mean, if you're DC, I feel like, like what, what do you ban against LFY? I mean, they, they seem to have done their best efforts this game round, but 
this lineup that LFY had, it's it's you, you got to kind of ask that with the enemy team even banning anything, it feels like LFY just turned up with exactly what they wanted to do, and DC didn't have an answer. Yeah, it, I think DC was really confident in this mid matchup, this uh, Queen of Pain versus this DK, but it went so heavily in Super's favor. Can't understate that at all. That one v one matchup play. was really one sided. On top of that dive, the mid dive. Yes. Yeah, they they dove like that. And it was like, hey, what's going on? And and then they recover. That really was not a loss at all for them. And that's why. Wow, there we have it. Game one's done. Twenty six minutes in. Very speedy. Very quick. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see what happens in Return of the Bulba. Game two coming up round the corner. <laughs>